I'll tell you what, there's just not enough room in this room for everything now. I've got so much crud stuck in here. Alright, I just started this video and I had to stop and start over because I just learned an interesting fact. If this tester, tube tester, is not level, then the meter doesn't read correctly, which I thought it was broken for a second. Either way, I was going to show you how to get uh, the best tubes in your amp. I just bought these uh, 1953 date match tongue saws online, eBay. $20 a piece. I thought it was a good deal. They looked like good tubes. They didn't have any scars. He advertised them as used. Uh, I Sometimes you get lucky and they'll be pretty much just like new. And I bought them. And if you're ever going to mess around with tubes, and you got a lot of tubes like I do, uh, it's hard to keep them straight, keep track of them. Um, so you almost have to have a tube tester. And I'm by no means an expert, but I've done this enough, played around with different tube combinations where you actually can hear a difference in tone. Uh, cheers, it's Saturday night. That's uh, my gin and tonic. <laughs> okay, let's see. So, you let the tube warm up. You let the tester warm up. This is, a, this is where I realized I had a problem. The line adjusts voltage. You have to get this... Uh, dialed into the center so that you're, you have consistent test on every tube because each one draws a different voltage and it kind of changes the way the reading goes unless you center this every time. Okay, the tube's warmed up. 300 minimum for a 5881. I don't like to use anything as close to the minimum. 550 is probably one of some of the stronger tubes I've gotten and that's those are readings that are particular to this Hickok 752 if you have a Hickok TV7 I mean it reads in a scale from 1 to 30 or something like that I don't know why they have so many different scales but this one in particular is uh, 300 is minimum 600 I think is new so I measure these, and, and what you do is you check the trans, uh, micro modes, as they call it. Push this, and I get a reading of about 530. I can also check the life of the tube if there's much life left in it. I, I recently bought some tubes that the guy told me he tested good. Then when I put them on the tester, I think it read about 50. I'd never seen a tube read so bad. I got all my money back. I bought four tubes. They were all bad. I emailed him. He said, uh, oh, well, the guy that I bought them from tested them, and he said they were good. So he didn't even have a tester. He wanted to know what kind of tester I had. So anyway, you can't sell tubes or buy tubes without a tester, unless you buy brand new tubes and most of those don't last very long. So, sorry to be so long-winded. I'm trying to explain everything to you. You have to go through the manual to learn how to set all the dials up. It's not as complicated as it looks. This is the bias for the tube. Uh, these You set these all to what the manuals, the, the roll chart. You just go to 5881 and it'll tell you where to set all these dials. Which is this filament, filament, grid, grid, plate, screen, cathode, suppressor. On a 5881, you won't test every all of those. This is more for the, the preamp tube, tubes. You can test both sides and stuff. This is the voltage of the tube, which right now is on 6.3 volts. Either way, it's testing about 5... Tested at about 535, 530. So I played the tubes in the amp, which I'll show you in a second. That's uh, over here, the Bandmaster. I was trying to get some new tubes for the Bandmaster, and I, and I have tubes 
that I, I've, you know, in a box up here. You know, I put them in there, and they sounded pretty good, and they were matched. They were running pretty hot, which I'll explain the bias. They run around 47, 46 milliamps, which seemed kind of high to me. Uh, each tube is different. You never know what you're going to get. That's why they match tubes. So with this, you can kind of you can't match tubes with this tube tester, but you can match tubes with the bias uh, bias probe, which I'll show you. Okay, let's see. So the tube is measuring, like I said, oh shoot, wrong button. About five thirty. To get the life of the tube, you stick it on shunt. You push this button. You you dial it into where the the meters goes to a thousand, then you push this live test. And depending on how far it drops, is how much life the tube has. If it doesn't drop at all, then it's pretty much got full life. You don't ever want it to drop past the center mark here. And it's kind of tricky to get this darn thing to read right at a thousand for some reason, but I'll get it close as I can just to show you. Push this little button. It actually lowers the voltage on the tube to 5 volts. Uh, you can see, it, I don't know if you can see, but the needle barely drops down one increment, if that. So it's still got a good life, but it, it really, it didn't sound that strong to me for some reason. So I went through my box. I pulled out some other tubes. These things get pretty hot. Found one that was reading 550, so I thought I would try them. And now I'll show you that uh, I actually I'm go to the amp now. I actually got a better sounding pair. I and I've done this enough to where I've noticed a difference in the tubes. Matched versus un versus unmatched and all that stuff. But uh, what I wanted to show you is you can go online to the Weber bias uh, calculator and you can plug in a 5881 at the very top of it. Put in your plate voltage, which I'll show you how to measure. And it'll tell you the max milliamps that you can draw on these tubes without damaging them. You know, if you get any higher, why if you run the amp pretty hard, it will uh, red plate. The plates will turn red, and you pretty much burn the tubes out in a short period of time. I mean, if you set these things up in the medium range, which that... Uh, bias chart will show you all the ranges from cool to hot actually you need to go off the 25 watt section which is for the EL34's they don't actually don't list 5881's in those tables either way here's my meter cheap old radio shack I don't have these probes hooked into it right now but you would ground this one touch this one to the to the main uh, plastic brown or blue wire that comes off the power transformer onto the power tube socket which is pin 3 and you can check your your vo plate voltage which is I know already on this one it's 388 volts so you go to your chart you plug in 388 volts in that top line drop down menu 5881 it'll tell you the max milliamps that you can bias it at which uh, came out to 47, so I was pretty close to the, and that's 70% of the tube uh, capa capability, I guess, and it will, uh, you know, you'll still probably use them up pretty fast, but you won't burn them up. I mean, they're supposed to last about 1,400 hours, so that, that's, uh, that's quite a long time, you know, that can be years three or four or five years. Uh, as much as I play, they still last two or three years, but that's why I check them all the time. But as you can see, 
this is how you match them. This is a dual bias probe. It's even called dual bias tester. The sockets plug into the tube sockets and you need to plug the tubes in to those sockets. And you have this switch and you can go back and forth between each tube. And uh, the right tube is running at 37.6 milliamps. And the left tube is running at about 40.5. So that's you know, a little bit, uh, that's probably in the medium range, which I like to have it around there. Like I said, these both ran at around 46. So you can, since these were reading at around 550, they had a little more life to them. And these are uh, 60s, mid 60s tubes. I think they had a little more punch and a little more life to them, a little more tone. So the cool thing about these dual bias probes is while you've got it turned on, you can actually play the amp. And uh, and pretty good to me. So what I'm saying is I, I bought these $40. I didn't waste a lot of money. If you want to buy new old stock 58 ones, you could pay up to a $150 maybe nowadays. I mean, they're asking an arm and a leg for those things. So I thought I got a pretty good deal. They're a good backup set. This one I didn't put the adjustable bias pot in it. I wanted to keep it as original as I could. So I basically have to match the tubes to the circuit. I have to try different ones. Make sure it's within the limits. Make sure they're close. They don't have to be matched. They, they give you a little more power I think they say. Or a little clean headroom. If they're matched, they work together better. But if you want to get like a crazy distortion, put two unmatched tubes way off, and you'll get. You just have to experiment. You might get some crazy cool distortion that you like. <laughs> Dunlop Stubby. Dunlop Stubby. I think I bought some jazz stubbies. I was I was kinda of impressed. They don't wear down. And they get a little bit better tone than those thumb picks I was using. picks I don't drop them all the time this is a long video sorry about that a little OCD on that and that's
loopy's tape in there. Those, those are always amazing. Everybody always likes to see that. See, this is a, the scotch tape that Loopy put in there in 1959. That probably adds about $2,000 to the amp value because most of them don't have that in there. But everybody likes to, some people prefer other uh, assemblers better than others and Loopy is pretty much famous at Fender. But that's the amp. See the bias probes? They're plugged in. Now that I got everything dialed in with the meter, tube tester, I will uh, go ahead and take the tubes out, put them back in the sockets, put the back on, and we will start jamming. Thanks for watching.